Uh, welcome to this week's Waterloo Wednesday webinar. Today is January 20th, 2021, and we're excited to bring you today's topic on Waterloo's university colleges. So there are many ways you can add to your experience at Waterloo, and we will certainly share a lot about those ways with you over the next few months in this webinar series. Um, but the university colleges are a great example to start off with. Um, so as always, before we begin, we'll remind you to ask questions throughout. We will be answering. We've lots of, got lots of uh, great and knowledgeable staff working and students working behind the scenes to ensure that you get answers to all of your questions. And of course, we'll do our Q&A at the end as well. And if there are any follow up questions after this webinar, you'll be able to send us an email too. If you'd like to have captions on during the presentation, you can see how to do that here. Click on the three dots in the middle of your screen in the icon bar and then select turn on live captions and you'll be able to see uh, captions throughout the next hour or so. So as we get started, for those of you who have not joined us before, my name is Laura. I'm one of your co-hosts of the Waterloo Wednesday series. My pronouns are she and her, and um, I am a national marketing and recruitment specialist from the University of Waterloo. I'm also a proud graduate from the Honors Arts and Business Program, and I majored in French. And with me once again is my co-host, another familiar face, Jay. Hey, Laura. Hey. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. That's good. Uh, hi, everybody. And uh, yeah, my name is Jay. I use the pronouns he and him. And uh, similar role to Laura, one of the National Marketing and Recruitment Specialists and uh, one of the hosts of our Waterloo Wednesdays. And uh, also a proud grad from our Honors Arts and Business program, uh, though I chose to major in history. And I actually was co-registered with St. Jerome's University, one of our university colleges that we are going to be talking about today. So looking forward to that. Uh, now we've got uh, a few of us on the line today who are going to be presenting to you and uh, none of us are on campus right now. We are presenting from our homes and uh, with that we would like to acknowledge that we do live and work on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. The University of Waterloo, including our four university colleges, are situated on the Haldeman Track, land that was promised to the Six Nations and includes six miles on each side of the Grand River. And as we go throughout the presentation today, we hope that you will take time to also respect and acknowledge the traditional territories that you may be on as well. All right, so in the next hour or so, uh, we're going to just take a, a brief moment to let you know about some of our upcoming events at Waterloo, ways that you can stay connected with us. Uh, Laura is going to be sharing one of her favorite uh, stories, a pretty recent story that's just come out. Then we'll get into the bulk of the presentation, which will be our university colleges presentation, so you can learn more about what they are and what they offer. And then, of course, we've got our weekly quiz, your chance to take home uh, some hoodies or be sent hoodies to your home, I guess, is, is a better way to put it. And uh, as a heads up, for those who have joined us before, we didn't hide any uh, gifts or stickers in the presentation this time. So we hope that you'll still be watching the slides, but uh, we've got three questions that we'll be bringing to you later on. And we will end our uh, webinar with a Q&A time, but you can, as Laura mentioned, send in your questions at any point through the Q&A box and our staff and students uh, are, are here to answer those for you. Okay, so coming up, what do we have? Uh, of course, on Wednesdays, we offer these great Waterloo Wednesday webinars. So this is two of 20 that we are offering between January and the end of May. So lots of great topics, including more information about our athletics programs and campus recreation, housing, student services. Uh, we've got lots of great student panels coming up as well. So make sure you look into that schedule and register for, uh, for those that you are interested in. And we will be posting many of these uh, the recordings onto our YouTube page as well. So if you miss them or want to go back and see any, you can find them at Experience Waterloo on YouTube. Also, for our younger students out there, if you are starting to think about university, which if you're tuning in right now, you probably are, make sure you check out our Grade 10 Family Night, which is happening on February the 18th. Uh, this night is designed for students who are just starting to look into university. We've got some experts who are going to give you some tips on things like admissions, financing, um, basically what you can do to start preparing for university. Our keynote speaker is actually going to be one of our professors who does research into uh, things students wish they knew before they applied to university. So uh, sign up for that and it's, uh, it's again on February the 18th. 
And you can see some extra links there for more information if you are looking to get your hands on some of our brochures, whether it's our general Waterloo brochure or some of our faculty or program brochures, um, request those. We'll send them to you for free or you can download them on the spot as well. And of course, if you've got any questions at any point, our team is here to help you out. So you can email them to us, liaison at uwaterloo.ca. All right, so last week I shared my favorite story. It came from uh, 2020. Laura, this time it's your turn. Let's hear what your favorite story is, but is it better than drones? That's my, that's what I'm, I wanna hear. Well, Jay, what do you think about saving the environment? That's, that's up there with, a strong with drones, story. yeah. Good, good, glad you think so. Um, so I wanted to tell everyone about um, a game that was actually just released today. Um, and it's basically an edu educational simulation game where players explore solutions to the impacts of climate change. And it was developed um, at the University of Waterloo by our inter interdisciplinary center on climate change uh, in partnership with the university's Games Institute. So this game basically uh, teaches players about the impacts of climate change while also inspiring hope and, and motivating Canadians to take action and find effective solutions that will help to uh, hopefully positively shape our future. And it was a multidisciplinary team who worked on this. It was um, staff, faculty, and students from many different areas on of campus. So um, I think once again, a pretty cool example of uh, what our Waterloo uh, kind of team or, or community is putting together with their knowledge and their skills in order to have a positive impact on the world. All right, so we will certainly hear some more stories today, um, but they will be about our university colleges more specifically. So let's find out who we've got joining us this week. And Grant, if you'd like to introduce yourself first, the floor is all yours. Great. Well, I'm going to download that game this evening. So mm -hmm. hi, everybody. My name is Grant Leach, and I am the Director of Marketing and Recruitment at Renison University College. Um, that's one of the four university colleges that you're going to learn about tonight. Um, I studied internationally. I, I, I did my undergraduate studies overseas in Australia, and then I did my master's in Taiwan and in Washington, D.C. So uh, I'm really passionate about education and recruiting domestic students as well as international students to the University of Waterloo and it's great to be here. My pronouns are he, him and his. Thanks Grant, good to have you. And Tommy, do you want to say hi next? Absolutely. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Tommy Mayberry and I'm the manager of outreach and recruitment at St. Jerome's University and my pronouns are he, she and they. So you can use any of those three series to refer to me. Um, and I actually did go to Waterloo and to St. Jerome. So many more years ago than I probably should say out loud, I did a double major in English Literature and Fine Arts Studio at Waterloo and St. Jerome's. So coming back to join St. Jerome's University as their manager for our gym recruitment was a wonderful way to kind of go full circle, come home um, to St. Jerome's and you know, back to where it all started, which was you know a presentation similar to these ones um, where someone was chatting with me about Waterloo and St. Jerome's and completely sold me on that experience. So I'm so happy to be here with all of you tonight chatting about um, not just Waterloo and not just St. Jerome's, but the University College experience at the University of Waterloo. Thank you, Grant and Tommy, for joining us today. As I mentioned off the, the top, uh, I did spend a lot of my time in undergrad at a university college. I, I lived at one and took many of my classes at one, so really excited about this topic. Uh, but I will admit that when I started doing my research into, um, into the University of Waterloo, I had no idea what these university colleges were or what they offered or why they might be relevant to me. So I think that's probably a, a good spot for us to start off is what is a university college? And uh, Tommy, do you want to start and, and help us out with that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the, the best analogies that we like to use for what is a university college is thinking about um, a neighborhood within a city. Um, and so if you think of Toronto, um, like the image on the slide, you know, Toronto is a very big city and it's made up of a bunch of different neighborhoods that are small, tight-knit communities um, all within the larger city of Toronto. And so that's exactly what the university colleges are for Waterloo. If the University of Waterloo is this big city, 
um, St. Jerome's University, Renison University College, St. Paul's University College, and Conrad Grable University College are four tight-knit communities right on campus that are just a small steps away from all of the goings on on main campus as well. Um, so just like how if you live in the city of Toronto, you're a Torontonian, and if you live in one of the small neighborhoods within Toronto, you're still a Torontonian, um, you, are, you are still and you always will be a University of Waterloo student earning their degree, at, um, their Waterloo degree, if you're someone who's living and or studying at a university college. So um, keep that neighborhood within a city in mind as we go um, throughout the presentation um, with you folks today. It can really help um, figure out um, how this all works because um, it's really special and it has um, kind of a, a double community vibe to it when you're a part of a, a university college or a UC um, at the University of Waterloo. And I'll let Grant chat a little bit more about um, some of those pieces as well. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tommy. So the university colleges house various Waterloo academic programs, as well as being uh, a residence community for students from all six faculties at the University of Waterloo. Now, you're going to learn more about this to, uh, later on in the presentation, but I wanted to say we're pretty famous for our all-inclusive meal plan. So paying one price for residence and meals, all-inclusive. And uh, on top of that, we all have unlimited chocolate milk on tap, which I know is super popular with the students and it's kind of popular with some of the staff too. You know, the more I hear about the chocolate milk on tap, the more I wonder whether I chose the wrong residence. I'm sorry. I don't know, just kidding. I love my time in residence at Waterloo, but I have to say the university colleges certainly have a lot to offer. Uh, and so as you've mentioned at Waterloo, we have four university colleges and they have many similarities, um, but they also have a lot of differences and we'll talk a little bit more about those later on. Um, but Tommy, I was wondering if you could let us know a little bit more about these four, uh, where they're found at Waterloo and where they're located. Absolutely. Um, so one of the perhaps um, biggest questions we get about the university colleges is where are they and how do they connect to the University of Waterloo? So on the, the slide here is a map of the University of Waterloo. And as you can see, the four university colleges are right at the heart of the University of Waterloo, or as we call it across the creek, um, because you'll see that um, there's um, Laurel Creek is um, runs right through the University of Waterloo. And there are several bridges along the creek that connect Ring Road and main campus to the University College just across the way. So we're a three to five minute walk from the Student Life Center on main campus and, um, and from UW Health Services as well. We're the closest buildings to health services as well, um, which are also located across the creek but aren't a university college. Um, so some people do consider the University of Waterloo to be a large campus and coming with that it can feel overwhelming, especially if you're someone who's coming from a smaller high school or a smaller town or smaller community. And the university colleges offer our students that happy medium between that you know world-class large huge university experience with everything going on that is a big city and community in itself while still having those smaller pockets of tighter knit communities as well so um, all of our students at the university colleges are waterloo students who are working toward that reputable degree but they're doing so in a smaller community that they get to call home and I can certainly relate to that. Uh, back when I was a prospective student doing my research, I looked into Waterloo and I was sold on the program Arts and Business and uh, really liked the idea of co-op being part of my studies and I, I knew I liked the city of Waterloo, but I came from a smaller town and a smaller high school and I was a, a little bit unsure of uh, Waterloo being as big as it was if, if I would feel comfortable there. And once I did some more research and took a tour and stumbled upon the university colleges, I found that it was a um, a very comfortable uh, community to be a part of and um, it really helped me kind of transition from a smaller high school to settle into the larger main campus. Even though in the end Waterloo was not intimidating at all, it was still nice to have that home base at the university colleges. Uh, so that's a, a little bit about why I chose university college, but Grant, uh, you're around uh, our, our current university college students all the time. What are some of the reasons that they bring up for why they chose Renison and St. Jerome's and Grable and St. Paul's? 
Well, thank you, Jay. We we like to think um, about the university college experience as a community experience in three S's. So S, the first one is a small community. Second S would be a supportive community. And the third is a social community. So a lot of students are choosing for those reasons. And when, when they're a part of a university college, we want to stress that you are still a University of Waterloo student. You have full access to all of the amenities, the facilities and resources offered through main campus. Our students have access to the same co-op jobs at Waterloo. They walk over to the gym together. They join clubs offered on main campus and find awesome cozy coffee shops around campus to study in. And at the end of the day, our students graduate with a reputable University of Waterloo degree, but benefit from that community, smaller community feel experience. Thanks for giving us a little more background there, Grant. And um, a question that I'm going to pose to Tommy is, you've mentioned that there are a couple of ways that students may find or develop an affiliation with the university colleges. So there's academically, as well as through residence. Um, but if we're talking specific specifically about academics, um, how does that work? How do students get involved with the university of college? And what does it look like for a student who wants to take classes at one of the university colleges? Yeah, that is a great question. Thank you, Laura. Mm -hmm. um, because as we were chatting about, the university colleges are both residence communities and academic communities. And so being academic communities, you can take classes um, at any or all of the four university colleges. All four of us offer classes and we are um, home based to some programs as well. So any student is able to take classes, any Waterloo student is able to take classes at the four university colleges and they might take them as part of their major or as an elective. And so um, those electives are where a lot of people will find their way over to the university colleges because maybe their program isn't offered at one of the university colleges but there might be a really cool course on superheroes or a really cool course in music that they're going to find their way across the creek to us as well um, and that's where they start to notice um, some of those famous things that make us different which are um, our small class sizes so the majority of our classes at the university colleges average about 50 students in the class and so this provides our students with greater opportunities to engage with their professors both inside the classrooms and outside the classrooms and really get to know their peers and their programs and their elective classes and other folks that they will come across on campus as well. So our students find it much easier to build friendships and lasting relationships in small classes because you notice the same smiling faces every week as you come across the creek to, um, to our classrooms and engage with our profs in the courses that we offer um, across the creek. Um, that again, you'll hear us say this many, many times, are still Waterloo classes and are still classes that are going toward your University of Waterloo degree as well. Mm -hmm. And as a Waterloo student, I took some um, music courses at Conrad Grable and some English courses at St. Jerome's and I always enjoyed my little walk across the creek each week to, uh, to join those classes. And, um, yeah, I had a great time over there. So that's kind of how I learned about them. But um, there's also, of course, co-registration, spe specifically at Renison and St. Jerome's. Um, so Grant, and uh, I'll turn to you first, and then we'll get Tommy to weigh in as well. Um, could you talk about how a student can co-register and also what it means? So where are they taking their classes? Where does their degree come from and that sort of thing? Sure, thank you, Laura. Co-registration uh, might sound confusing, but it's actually, it, it means exactly what it says. Um, co means with, so you're registering with the University of Waterloo and either St. Jerome's University College or Renison University College. And we like to say you're really getting the best of both worlds when you do that. So students who are interested in honors arts or honors arts and business are eligible to co-register through Renison or St. Jerome's and by co-registering our students have access to additional resources and additional supports. Um, one of the more popular ones is additional entrance scholarships as well as continuing scholarships in um, as students transition from first year into second year and third year um, and also having academic advisors right there in the buildings to support you while you're working towards your Waterloo degree. Now over to you, Tommy, and maybe you can talk a little bit about how uh, students can co-register with either St. Jerome's or Renison. 
Absolutely. Thank you, Grant. Um, so co-registering is quite easy to do, and there are two ways that you can do it. The first is that you can apply directly to the Honours Arts Program at Renison or at SJU on the OUAC website or OUAC or OUAC or however we're pronouncing that acronym these days. The Ontario University Application Centre does have that option to apply right to the University of Waterloo's Honours, Honours Arts Program through Renison or through St. Jerome's. And that will bring your application right to Grant or to me. Um, so that's one way you can do it. The other way that you can do it is you can apply to the Honours Arts Program at Waterloo specifically, and then connect with either Renison or St. Jerome's after for us to co-register you. Um, the second option just takes one additional step, which is Grant or me just adding you into our co-registration list. Um, and you can do that at any time throughout your degree. I do want to stress though, as Grant said, there is a benefit to doing this before your studies start at the University of Waterloo. And really that comes down to there just being more money for you over the course of your four, to, your four years with us then. Um, but you can co-register co at any time with us. The earlier the better for more resources and more support as you go, but it's never too late until you graduate. Um, that wasn't supposed to be a rhyme, but that came out quite nicely as a, as a slogan. Never too late till you graduate. Um, so more benefits and nothing lost. I also want to stress for that. Co-registering at Renison or St. Jerome's does not take away a single thing from your University of Waterloo degree or experience. It just adds more to it. Uh, thanks for that explanation, uh, Tommy. And yeah, so I, I, as I mentioned, went to St. Jerome's and uh, uh, graduated from the arts and business program co-registered, but my degree is still a University of Waterloo degree, and I know that's a common question that comes up. Uh, Going to stick with my own uh, background here, but when I lived at St. Jerome's in the residence, um, that was probably the most active I've had as a social life, um, and uh, it actually had sometimes, uh, I really had to work on my organization skills between, okay, should I be studying right now, or could I join whichever events going on in the gym or in the lounge or whatever it might be so and I know that's the same for all of the university colleges all being neighbors there's a lot going on uh, in that area of campus so uh, Grant is it still the same now what's what's going on at the university colleges when it comes to student life and the different things that uh, your residents and students can be a part of Mm -hmm. Well, without a doubt, we are a social community and a lot of that has to do with the amazing events that are hosted to help students build community when they're coming to university. I love it that uh, so many events are happening that even I get to be involved in and sample some of the amazing food that usually comes along with those activities as well. So the universities. Uh, the university colleges are well known for having an engaged and active student body. Oftentimes students will join university colleges because they want to get involved and they absolutely thrive in our smaller atmospheres at the university colleges. There are additional leadership opportunities and involvement opportunities that are specific to each university college. We each have our own student councils and clubs where students can volunteer or even take on a leadership role. And many of those leadership roles are paid, by the way. Um, so throughout the year, we run countless events that accommodate all of our students. Some events include uh, college-wide dinners where students enjoy a meal with the staff and faculty as well as their other peers living in the university college. We have uh, what we call an inter-college cup and this is a series of really fun and friendly competitions that take place between the university colleges. Um, students can take part in a Relay for Life, which is a big fundraiser where students stay awake all night and raise money for the um, Canadian Cancer Society. And we also have numerous events for our introverts in the audience out there who just want to kick back and watch a movie with a couple friends. So the list, I could go on and on and on. We have so many, many more activities, uh, but really that's the best part as, as being a part of that community and getting to know others through those activities. And Tommy, over to you. Yeah, a couple other things um, on this point as well, um, turning it to a bit of the, the resident side of this is something else we like to brag about as the university colleges are that um, we have the lowest dawn to student ratio across campus. So um, for people who are looking for that smaller, tight knit community, more of a kind of family feel, um, the group of students who will be supported and overseen by a dawn will be smaller at one of the university colleges. So you'll be able to develop um, a lot again, more um, of a, a social network through um, them as well. And we're quite proud of them that smaller experience in the residences as well. 
On the slide here, you'll see images from our university colleges that are going to give you a sample of what our rooms look like. And you know, we we do know that you probably won't be spending all of your time in your rooms, um, but here's just a peek of what the different room setups can look like and how other folks have um, set them up and are um, inhabiting them as well. Um, but we always like to save the best for last, and that is our all-you-can-eat style meal plans at the four university colleges. So our cafeterias are definitely something to check out, especially for all of you foodies out there. Um, eating meals together is a pretty big deal at the university colleges. As Grant was saying, we have those community-wide dinners where you know profs will join, staff will join, and they're really special at the at the colleges. A really big deal. Um, that welcoming atmosphere that we foster is something that um, you know leads to never having to worry about eating dinner alone. Alone. Um, there will always be a seat at the table for you, always a familiar face waving you over to enjoy your delicious meal. Um, and again, that all you can eat style meal plan also has some cool benefits in it in terms of you don't have to worry about budgeting for food or cooking your own food or running out of dollars on your watt card um, for buying food as well. You'll be able to um, eat as much as you want to at all of the meals of the day. And the um, the food really is um, incredible at the four university colleges. So really, really something we're proud of and something that makes a big difference in um, in our students' lives as well. I still brag about the food uh, to this day from my residence experiences. And even as a staff person now on main campus, uh, that's a big thing that I miss not being, uh, or that now that we're working from home is going over to the university colleges to enjoy some lunch. So uh, can't wait to get back to that. Um, okay, so you had mentioned that um, students, regardless of their program, uh, even if they're not registered academically with uh, a university college, can still live there. So uh, I have no doubt that uh, students who are watching right now, who might be in engineering or science or math or any of our other faculties, um, might be thinking this is a, a pretty good thing to look into. Can I still live there? So what is that process um, for students now who, who do want to uh, consider one of the university colleges as a residence choice? And uh, Grant, I think we'll have you explain that to start off. Sure, yeah, that's true. We do have students from all six faculties living at the university colleges. And the great thing about being a University of Waterloo student is that you are guaranteed housing as a first year student. And we have a really simple process. So at the time when you receive your offer of admission um, to the University of Waterloo, you're gonna also, um, at the time you're gonna, you're gonna accept your offer, you're also gonna be submitting your residence community ranking form which is due June 1st at the time of when you're accepting your offer and this is your chance to tell us if you'd like to live at a Waterloo residence community or at a university college residence community. So we really encourage you to visit each of the residences virtually to decide what will be your first, second and third choice. And then we do our very best to get you into your first choice residence community. So make sure you rank the place that you really want to live as your number one. Now, the University College residences offer, um, as I said, a, a great cross section of students from all six faculties. So you're really going to get to mix and mingle with everybody who's studying at the University of Waterloo. But there are some living learning communities as well within the university colleges. And a living learning community is a, um, a small group of students in the same faculty or program who live together in the same area or in the same residence. And each living learning community will have an upper year mentor to support first year students like yourselves. Um, they'll help you achieve your academic goals and um, they'll give you greater access to faculty faculty as well and supports from faculty when you're living in the living learning communities along with related programming that's just going to help you be more successful in transitioning to university. Now each university college offers residence options that are available to all students at Waterloo and our residence communities are smaller than the main campus residences. So just to give you a sense of the size, we actually range in size from about 150 45 students to 360 students, depending on which university college that uh, you're going to be living in. Now, it's important to mention 
that one of the university colleges, which is on the screen, it's called Conrad Grable. It's not part of the first year guarantee process that I just described. So if you would like to live at Conrad Grable after you've gone and done a virtual tour and check things out, you can fill out the Grable residence application form and that is easily found on Grable's website. Um, so you'll wait to hear back from Grable before filling out the residence community ranking form. So there's no risk associated with applying to Grable. If you don't get an offer from them to live in their university college, then there still will be time for you to jump in on that first year guarantee ranking form for the other three university colleges and all of main campus um, housing as well. So just to, to, I know that was probably a bit confusing, but to reiterate, St. Jerome's, Renison and St. Paul's uh, are part of that first year guarantee. Wonderful. Okay, so I think based on all of the um, all of the information that uh, Grant and Tommy have shared so far, we probably have some students who are, you know, interested in the university colleges as a general concept, but are now interested in learning a little bit more about the individual ones. So to help with that, um, could we do a brief overview of each of the four? And we'll start off with you, Grant. So Renison is home to the Social Development Studies program as well as the Bachelor of Social Work and Masters of Social Work and we also house the Bridge to Academic Success in English program as well. So we have some living learning communities at Renison so we house the Social Development Studies living learning community but we also house that warrior academic leadership community so that's for our athletes that are coming in um, and they're really looking for additional supports um, as well as that all-inclusive kind of meal environment that we talked about and we also house the bridge to academic success in English um, living learning community. We have, we're really proud that we have the lowest dawn to student ratio of any residence facility on campus um, so you get a lot of supports as a result of that. And you'll have access to a thing called My Pantry, which is a fully stocked um, cooking area within our residence facility. So if you're not interested in eating in the cafeteria, maybe cooking something uh, you know, that you're familiar with, you have access to that in our, our My Pantry. We have over 100 paid leadership and volunteer positions at Renison. So if you're looking to get some experiences on your resume, Renison is a great place to do that. Um, and of course, by living at Renison, it's an invitation to all of our community and events, um, including our themed college dinners, our inter-college cup, cooking lessons with our head chef, chef Tim, and more. Now, um, I'm going to pass it over um, to Anna, who can talk about the environment at, at um, oh no, I guess I'm going to do St. Paul's. That's right. Yeah. So let me tell you a little bit about the St. Paul's University College. It's a newly renovated, um, they have newly renovated single rooms and deluxe single rooms with a privacy barrier. And they even have ensuite washrooms in these new deluxe um, single rooms as well. And all rooms, have individual temperature control at, at, which includes air conditioning and heating and St. Paul's is home to the Faculty of Environment Living Learning Community as well as the Women in Engineering Living uh, Learning Community and La Bastille which is the only French residence floor um, at the University of Waterloo. And they also house the Waterloo Indigenous Student Centre, which we call WISC. And they also have another, another really awesome part of St. Paul's is their Greenhouse Innovators in Residence. It's a community where students create social or environmental change. Now, they have a small community of, st of students, again, from all six faculties with peer leaders and dons and professors around the corner to assist their students. And they also house some minors in Canadian studies, um, human rights and Indigenous studies. Now, over to you, Tommy, and you can talk about St. Jerome's. Thanks, Grant. 
Um, so at St. Jerome's University, we have um, about 277 rooms in our residence, and those rooms come with um, a fully, they're fully furnished and they come with some of the best views of campus. Um, so from the residence building at St. Jerome's, you can see right over across the creek um, at the science buildings, the Quantum Mano Center, the library, all of those pieces there. So a really kind of cool view um, of main campus from the St. Jerome's University um, residence. The residence building also has over 6,000 square feet of amenity space. That includes um, an art room, a music studio, a fitness studio, our, our gymnasium, a bunch of student lounges, and a bunch of um, dedicated study spaces as well. So that if you're finding it tricky to get your favorite spot in one of the libraries or coffee shops across campus, there are always dedicated study spaces back home at the residence building as well. We also have our all-inclusive, all all-you-can-eat meal plan um, that includes a pantry similar to Renaissance as well for any of your DIY cooking um, and other access to healthy food late with extended hours as well. We have over 150 dynamic um, student involvement opportunities that range from things that are kind of um, one-off big events like Relay for Life to things that are all year round like other student activity teams, um, the Dawns, um, other um, great things. Um, we also have a bunch of clubs and if there's, we always say if there's something that you're interested in doing and you don't see it there, um, propose it and get it going. And we recently had last term, which was really exciting, um, a dance club that started and then they quickly moved on to TikTok and we're getting um, their virtual dance on as well, which was exciting to see. Um, we have an integrated academic and um, residential experience as well, and we have a ton of support in our student affairs team that includes um, a wellness coordinator, a campus ministry um, coordinator, um, a dedicated academic advisor, um, I'm trying to remember what all of them uh, what all of them are, but there's a, a bunch of wonderful um, folks in student affairs who are with you from day one as, as you start um, with us as well. Um, and I'm not going to talk about Grable. I'm going to pass it over to Anna, who is a current student at Grable, um, special guest with us tonight, Anna. So Anna, could you tell us about um, the personality of Grable? Yeah, absolutely. So hey, everyone, I'm Anna. I'm currently in my second year at uh, um, University of Waterloo, and I am in the Peace and Conflict Studies program as well as Legal Studies. And I lived at Grable last year during my first year at university and absolutely loved it. And now I live off campus with 10 girls that I all met through Grable, so that's really fun too. Um, so a few things about Grable. One thing is we have really large windows and spacious rooms and a lot of natural light, which is really nice when you're spending time in your room. We have wall to wall windows in all of our res rooms. Another thing is we have a really spacious and again, library with very large windows, which is really, really nice. We also have a brand new kitchen and dining area that was just put in last year in 2020 that also has really big bright windows, which I really liked. Um, another thing is we are the smallest university college, so we only have about 140 students at Grable. So these students are from all years, so we have about 50% of our students coming from first year, and then the other 50% is from upper years. And this is really, really nice because it's kind of a blend between people who are, you know, in their first year of the program and other people who are a lot more experienced. So in my first year, I was in the same class with an upper year and I was struggling to study for the exam. So her and I would study together and she was just down the hall for me. So that was really fun. Um, also, as some of you may be applying for co-op, a nice thing about Grable is it can be a home base. So you can leave and go to co-op and then come back to stay at Grable for a term in your upper years. And another thing is at Grable, you get to engage with students from all different faculties, which is the same with the other university colleges. So my friend that was in one of my peace and conflict studies classes was actually in an engineering program. So I got to work with her and live with her, which was really fun. And the last thing I'll say is Grable is home to the Peace and Conflict Studies program, which is my program, and the music program as well. Um, and this is really nice. I took some music electives in my first year, and I had a class that was just downstairs. So I would walk to class two minutes before, and I'd be one minute early. So that was really fun. And the other thing is we are home to the Peace Tech Living Learning Community. So this combines uh, sort of peace building with new technology. So that's a really fun community to be a part of. Gotta love the short commutes to your class. You just <laughs> right from your right from your room and into the classroom. All right, so in just a moment, we're gonna get to our quiz and we're going to get to some questions that are coming in from our attendees, but we're putting up our contact information for each of the four university college representatives. So if you'd like to follow up, 
um, with uh, specific questions. You've got that here. So this is uh, an opportunity you can screen cap this or uh, at the end you can always email us at liaison at ewaterly.ca and we can connect you with the appropriate person. Uh, but before we move on to that, um, I did just want to uh, see, since we've got you here, you're the experts. Grant, are there any sort of insider's tips that you can give our students who are interested in the university colleges, whether it's academics or residents? Uh, what, what can you offer these interested students? Mm -hmm. Um, I guess my insider tip, first of all, is just visit the university colleges. It's really convenient right now with everything going online. You can check out the university colleges and have a virtual tour or, or set up a one on one with one of the university college representatives just to get a feel of which one is the right fit for you. After all, you're going to be spending a significant amount of time uh, within your, you know, your residence facility. So be sure to check them out. And in terms of getting your first choice residence, just just remember to submit that residence ranking form um, or apply directly to Conrad Grable, as I said, who's not a part of that residence community ranking form. So just being sure to rank them according to your preference and we will do our very best to get you in. And then my other tip is to be involved and just really take advantage of all the opportunities that the university colleges have for you to get involved and also to develop your leadership skills uh, by taking part in the various um, you know, leadership opportunities that exist, whether those are volunteer positions or paid positions. Um, it's just a great opportunity to get some really good quantifiable skill sets on your resume um, and, and start right away. And that's going to help you be more successful if you're in the, in the co-op programs as well. And I think that's good advice kind of no matter where students <laughs> head to after their high school education. You know, if you go to post-secondary, the more involved you get, uh, you know, the more connections you'll make and opportunities you could create for yourself down the road. So excellent advice. Thank you, Grant. Uh, and I do have one last question um, for you, Tommy. So you and Grant have shared a lot of great stuff. Everything I've heard sounds pretty good. Uh, so I have to ask, what is the catch here? So if the university colleges are as great as you say, then why doesn't everyone go to a university college at Waterloo? Uh, Laura, that's such a good question. And it's actually, it's a real question. It's one that we get all the time is what's the catch? There must be something that I will be missing out on from main campus if I pick one of the university colleges. Um, and the answer to that is absolutely not. As I said before, um, Nothing is lost in co-registering with St. Jerome's or Renison or in choosing to live at one of our um, of the four university colleges or eating in our cafeterias or participating in our student um, programming. Um, it's a kind of an everything gained from that. Um, so we, we talk about it as a kind of one plus one is greater than two. So not one plus one equals two. One plus one is greater than two when you're with one of the university colleges. And you know, for the, the question of why doesn't everyone go to university college? Well, that answer is quite the answer to that is quite simple as well. It comes down to what you want from your student experience at the University of Waterloo. We know that at the University of Colleges, our students choose a UC because of the smaller class sizes, the fantastic leadership opportunities, the outstanding support, the experiential learning opportunities, the list goes on and on and on. But the number one reason that our students keep telling us is community. They want that place where they can feel at home. They want that place where they can always come back to at the end of a day, whether it was a good day or a tougher day or a blah day with not much going on, that there's a place that will always be there for them at the end of the day. And so that community piece, as Grant said, you can start building that community with us now. So reach out to us, the four names on the slides, the social media, um, Instagram handles here, start connecting, start building that community um, with us now. Um, and we, are there and want to be there with you so that this place becomes your home as well. Um, so that's what I would say to that question. No catch and it's what you want to get out of your experience at Waterloo. Wonderful. Well, that was quite heartwarming. So thank you for sharing and thanks to both of you for uh, answering all of our hard hitting questions this evening. You did a great job and we will come back to you with some more questions in just a few moments. But first, it's time for I feel like we should have some sort of theme music here, Jay. Our weekly quiz. All right, so hopefully everyone is paying close attention um, to our session this evening because we have got a few questions for you, of course, on the topic of those university colleges. And before we get started, I wanted to remind everyone of the rules or let you know if this is your first time tuning in. 
First of all, you do have to put all of your answers in the same text or Q&A message to us and make sure that includes your email as well so that we're able to contact you if you are the winner. Um, so don't send in your responses one at a time, send them all in one chunk and we'll, that will ensure that we, we know all the answers are coming from the same person. Um, and yeah, the first submission with all the correct answers that includes their email address will win a prize. So if we're ready to dive in, here are your questions for this week. They are, which two university colleges can art students co-register with? And uh, you probably don't need a hint, but I'll give you a hint. Tommy and Grant represent these two university colleges. <laughs> okay, which university college is home to the music program? I believe this was mentioned earlier. And which university college has an environment living learning community? Okay, so we'll wait a few seconds for those responses to come flooding in. And as we wait for those, we will get to the answers. So and Laura, first, let's give oh, away three hoodies. So three hoodies. yeah, so uh, oh. let's see how many how many correct responses we get coming in today? Thrilling, wow. And I think uh, we've got a smaller crowd this evening than we did, you know, at, at the end of 2020. So everyone who's tuning in, your odds of winning a, a Waterloo hoodie are pretty good right now. So get those responses in. And uh, in case you haven't sent them in yet, or in case we don't have a winner yet, I'll tell you what the answers are. You can type these in and send them. Uh, which two university colleges can art students co-register with? Those are St. Jerome's University and Renison University College. Which university is home to the music program? That is Conrad Grable University College. We have Anna from Conrad Grable with us today, and we'll hear a little bit more from her later on as well. And finally, which university college has an environment living learning community? That is uh, St. Paul's University College. So let's see if we've got a winner here. Do, 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 do. No, no winner yet, so if you haven't sent in a response, you are welcome to. Um, but uh, when we get our winner, we will, uh, or I guess winners, we will announce that. Um, but uh, in the meantime, Jay, should we head over to our Q&A? Sure, let's do that. And everyone's got the answers. So the first three that we get, yeah. right answers with an email. This is your transfer, uh, free hoodie. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll send it right to your door. Um, okay, we'll keep you updated on that as they come in. Oh, anonymous, you've got the right ones, but you didn't put your email. So, we don't oh, no. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm going to start off with some questions. The first question that we have been receiving uh, quite a bit is about uh, residents and housing in general. So, I did just want to clarify that again, how the process works at the high level. Um, if you are interested in living on campus at the University of Waterloo, uh, which in a typical year, about 80% of our incoming students do choose to do, or at least 80%. Um, we do have that first year residence guarantee that Grant had mentioned. And so as long as you fill out the uh, form and uh, and submit your deposit on time, we will have a spot for you, whether it's in one of our main campus uh, communities or one of the, the three university colleges that were mentioned. And so that process happens once you get an offer of admission. So once you receive your offer of admission from the University of Waterloo, we'll give you kind of the next steps and, uh, and housing is one of them. So uh, once you have that offer, you will complete what's called the residence community ranking form. And uh, so that's where you can uh, kind of put the different communities in order of your preference. And we do our best to give students, uh, um, yeah, what, what they've requested uh, as best we can do that and um, get that in by June 1st. And then after June 1st, that's when we'll do uh, kind of the the uh, assignments from there. So, um, and we don't have, it's not first come first serve. So uh, you don't need to rush out and uh, try and get it done now, especially if you, if you don't have an offer yet, you can't, uh, but there's no difference to a student who puts in their form right now and a student who will put it in at the end of May. Uh, we take all of those after June 1st and make those assignments at that time. So that's how we do that. And then just remember Grable has a separate process uh, that takes place just a little bit before June 1st. So you can go through the Grable process if that's a community that you're interested in. And then um, if uh, it doesn't work out or it, you don't get a spot there, then you can still participate in the rest of the campus options. So that was one that I wanted to mention. Um, and then I wanted to bring it back. I, I think I'll put this question to you, Grant. Um, so Renison and St. Jerome's, you can register academically. You can go through the co-registration. Is there any difference in tuition or like, the quality of professors, anything like that? Uh, no catch there, or can you can you let us know how that works? Yeah, 
Um, it's a great question. No, there is no difference in tuition. Your tuition, whether you're uh, an art student, an honors art student, or an honors arts and business student registered at the University of Waterloo, or if you co-register, so you're a Waterloo and a, a Renison or a St. Jerome student, there's no differentials in the tuition fees. Really, what we're saying is you just get those additional supports and access to additional scholarships. Um, of course, a lot of your professors, if you're uh, if you're choosing to take some of the classes that are housed within the university college. Many of your professors might be just down the hall from you um, in terms of where your residence building is located and having your academic advisors actually located within um, the university college itself rather than, you know, trekking around campus trying to find it. There's just that built in kind of convenience and support that your profs might be there and your academic advisor might be there. Um, and um, also at Renison, we have our own registrar's office. So you don't even have to navigate those lines on main campus. You can just go directly and do add drops right at the Renison Registrar's Office. So th I think it's just the, the perks, but there's no additional fees for those perks. It's just a, a perk all around. All right, I'm going to interrupt with some breaking news if that's OK. And that is that we have winners. We have three winners. Um, so first in was Thea, and then we had Aku and Thackers. Um, so we will reach out to you to let you know how we can get those prizes to you. So thanks everyone for participating. And uh, yeah, another reason if you didn't win this evening, uh, good reason to tune in next week or in a subsequent week because uh, we are giving away hoodies every week. And if you pay close attention, then odds are you could win a great prize for yourself. Okay, so one question that I'd like to know is, um, you know, we talked a lot about co-registering for certain arts programs and, uh, you know, Grable offers a couple of arts majors and, and uh, environment is home to some courses in the Faculty of Environment, but um, could you talk, maybe we'll start off with Tommy and then Grant can um, chime in as well, um, about how students and other faculties might get involved with your university colleges, whether they live in residence, whether they're going to be able to connect with other students in their faculty and that sort of thing. Tommy, I'll flip it over to you. Yeah, that's a great question, Laura. Um, I'm glad that that one's coming up because it can sometimes sound like the university colleges are very arts oriented because we'll be talking about co-registering on others arts. We'll be mentioning, you know, programs that are all in the faculty of arts. Um, and so don't let that, um, you know, if you're someone who's interested in math or health or engineering or any of the, the non-arts ones, um, the university colleges are still totally for you. The residence is a great way for you to um, become a part of university college experience and get all of those benefits as well, because as we said, students from all six faculties will live in the residences. So it is, they're all little micro University of Waterloo communities with everyone um, connecting there. You also don't have to live in residence or co-register, and you can still be a part of the student leadership opportunity or you can be a part of um, eating the great food in the cafeterias or taking advantage of the library and study spaces or coming out to community events. Um, so there are so many ways that um, our non-art students can also benefit and be a part of it. So if you are a non-art student and you're thinking a lot of this stuff sounds great, connect with one of us um, or all of us on that slide with the four and ask about how your specific program can also be a part of the colleges because um, there is way more than just academics that are happening across the creek with us as well. Great question, Laura, thank you. You're welcome. And Grant, is there anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I think Tommy covered off the majority of that, but um, it's a great way for students to have experiences with all six faculties. You know, sometimes there's certain personality types associated with specific programs, and I'm personally the type that I love diversity and diversity in my community, and I like the flair that it brings having a really good cross section of students from all six faculties living together, and that's certainly something that uh, that you might enjoy in a university. University College environment, especially with, with its wealth of activities um, and ways for you to build community and get to know people outside of your program. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you both for that. I'm, uh, I'm going to send this next question to Anna. So Anna, I'm going to give you two questions here and I can repeat them if you forget, but just to make it a little easier. Uh, so the first one is that you mentioned you are a Peace and Conflict Studies uh, major, which is housed at Conrad Grable. So first, I'm wondering if you can let us know 
kind of on an like in an average term, how many classes are you taking at Conrad Grable and how many are elsewhere or does that happen? And then the second question I'm hoping you can touch on is uh, somebody was asking about the fill the table tradition. So I'm wondering if you could speak to that a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so the first question was about, um, yeah, classes. So um, obviously this term, since we are online, a lot of my classes would be at Grable, um, but now they're obviously just from my desk at home. In my first year, I didn't actually have any of my classes that were at Grable, um, but even though I was in Peace and Conflict Studies and Legal Studies, I did have some classes at St. Jerome's, even though I was living at Grable. Um, so yeah, I think typically, my music classes were um, at Grable and the music extracurriculars that I was in was also at Grable, but typically in their upper years are when more of our classes are in the classrooms at Grable. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how many that will be yet as I'm online right now, but um, it is really nice having those classes nice and close by. And then the second question on fill the table, this is something I think is super, super fun about Grable. So we have big circular tables in the dining room at Grable. And basically our idea is that when you come into the cafe, you take the first empty seat that there is. So you could be sitting with people that you know, people you've never talked to before. Um, so basically you never have to worry about walking into the cafe and having to sit by yourself or not knowing where to sit. You're just welcome to the first um, open table that there is. And this is super fun because there's people that I probably would not have sat with because I didn't know them very well, but I ended up having great conversations with, with professors and students from engineering and students from all different faculties that I wouldn't have necessarily been able to talk to. So that's a really fun thing about Grable. That sounds awesome, Anna, thank you. Okay, I have a two part question, so I'm going to direct the first part of the question to Grant. Um, Grant, I know we talked uh, about this already earlier on, but in case we have students who tuned in late or who, you know, just want to recap, could you remind us of what the application process looks like for students who are interested in co-registering for Honors Arts or Honors Arts in Business? Mm -hmm. So if a student is interested in co-registering it, if they're going to be going into Honours Arts or Honours Arts in Business, um, you really have the opportunity to do that um, at the time of application. So you can uh, apply through UAC directly to your program, so Honours Arts or Honours Arts in Business through either Renison University College or St. Jerome's. Um, but uh, many of you will have already applied. So if you have applied and you're like, gosh, I didn't do that I, I, and I do want to co-register, how do I go about that? So you can just um, send an email to either the St. Jerome's representative or to the um, Renison University College representative and we will ensure that you get co-registered. There's no fees involved for doing that. Um, and, and like Tommy said earlier in the presentation, you there is benefits to doing that before coming because you have access to additional scholarships as well as those continuing scholarships um, but there's nothing stopping you even from in your first year towards the end saying you know what I am going to co-register um, so that I can access some of those continuing scholarships um, but really we suggest you do it now so if you haven't already applied you can do it through UAC but if you have applied you can just reach out to us and we will ensure that you get co-registered and you get those benefits of being a Waterloo registered student and a Renison or St. Jerome's University College student. Grant, that was such a thorough answer that you answered part B of my question. So thank you very much. <laughs> and instead, I'm going to swap a different question for Tommy. Um, and that is, um, one student was wondering how residence works if they're in co-op. So are you able to touch on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so residents in co-op, um, it will depend on um, where your co-op is, um, for one, because if your co-op is in the Waterloo area or on Waterloo campus, um, as many co-op positions are as well, um, it will be different for the, the residence piece for that. And engineering, I can't speak to engineering, but I know Dreedy and some other folks who are on the call, because um, engineering has a program, or the pro engineering program, your co-op will start in your second term as well. And so with that one, I actually don't know how that one works for the co-op piece for it but um, with co-op it is it is quite easy to be um, you know connecting residents and co-op experiences together for that um, so again as Grant had said for the University College specifically um, reach out to us and we can um, answer those questions and take you through those as well but um, I'm wondering if someone else can answer the the engineering one 
Yep, I can I can help out with that. So um, if you happen to be in an engineering program that has co-op in the uh, second term of first year, then uh, you would still sign or go through the exact same residence process and um, you would sign an eight month contract. So you would be uh, potentially living in your campus in the fall term, in the winter term, you would then be on uh, your co-op term and then we would have a spot for you in the spring term to return. And uh, then you just wanna check with the different housing options that are in university colleges about uh, in your upper years. So most of you, your co-op won't happen until your upper years. So you just wanna check with them about their availability for upper year students living there, because uh, there are different uh, space amounts in each, um, but typically we can accommodate, well, we certainly can accommodate students, um, whether they're uh, in co-op or in the regular stream. So hopefully that helps out. Um, okay, so we're getting pretty close to six o'clock. Laura, do you want me to? Uh, I can uh, do the wrap up. All right, perfect. Yeah, Send no it worries. over to you. <laughs> All right, so thank you once again for joining us this week, Grant and Tommy and Anna and your colleagues who are working way behind the scenes in the Q&A. It was so great to, to have you with us to learn a little bit more about everything Waterloo's university colleges have to offer. So a quick reminder for our audience of some upcoming events. We do have a new set of Waterloo Wednesday webinars announced. Presumably, if you've joined us this evening, you're already aware of it, but maybe you're watching this on YouTube, in which case, check out uh, the upcoming ones that we've got. Um, we also have that grade 10 family night event for younger students for a little bit of discovery of you know, university in general and a little bit more about the University of Waterloo specifically um, and tips on preparing for university. And that is on February 18th. You can order brochures online anytime. We'll ship them to your home for free. Um, and uh, of course, you can see what else we've got going on on our blog at um, uwaterloo.ca slash beyond dash ideas, as well as our tours and events site, or send us an email, liaison at uwaterloo.ca. We're always happy to answer your questions, or if we don't know the answers, then we can certainly direct you to someone who does. All right, that's all from us this week. Be sure to join us next week with our first student panel of the year. They're going to share insights on how to prepare for success in university. And I know that I'm looking really looking forward to that one as I imagine many of our uh, future students are as well. So thank you so much for your time and we hope to see you next week. Take care.